So while the women's basketball team was busy trying to prove themselves against Columbia and Cornell, the men's ice hockey team was just trying to get back in the race and on their toughest road trip of the year when they went on to face uh, number 16 St. Lawrence and number 10 Clarkson, both games on the road in New York. It was a tough weekend for, for the Yale Bulldogs against these tough teams. The Saints were all over Yale in the first period, out shooting them 9-4. But senior Matt Medelsky, who earned his second start in a row, was up to the challenge. Kidd was stellar in the opening frame, giving a clinic against the top team in the ECAC. The Bulldogs trying to kill off a 5-on-3, and it's Medelsky. Look at the stretch. He may be the oldest player on the team at 23, but he's still as quick as ever. But Summy just can't stop at the second period, and SLU takes advantage of the 2 on one rush, and it's Jeremiah Cunningham getting a pretty pass and netting it. His goal gives the Saints a 2-0 lead. Yale trying to get the offense rolling, but Ryan Donald's shot goes just wide. Then it's the freshman, Greg, the fresh prince of Bel Air, on the breakaway, but Alex Batizian looking like Uncle Phil between the pipes. Early third period and Brock McBride just in the right place at the right time, and he hits the rebound home as this one's getting out of reach, and it's 3-0 Saints. Now 4-0 SLU, and Yale finally gets on the scoreboard as Beller takes the nice read from J.F. Boucher, and he doesn't miss from there. But in the end, the number 16 Saints just too much for Yale as the Elias dropped this one 4-1. Modelski looked good in goal, making 23 saves, but got little help from a feeble Yale offense that combined for just nine shots in the first two periods and failed to convert all seven of their power play opportunities. The Bulldogs will look to get back on track the next night, but it wouldn't be easy as they traveled to number 10, Clarkson. Yale came out energized on Saturday, outshooting Clarkson 9-3 in the first period. But then, a mistake on a power play, and Sean Weller takes advantage. As his backhand on the breakaway beats Alec Richards, who got the nod on Saturday, and the Knights on top early in this one. Bulldogs with four power play chances in the first period, but unable to convert a single one. They got their shots in, just not the quality ones they needed to get on the board with these man advantages. And although Coach Elaine said Richards didn't have his best stuff for Saturday night, he sure looked good in the second period, first stopping the close shot next to the crease. Then, sign this kid up for gymnastics. Hurts my groin just looking at that kick save. Mid-second period now, and Clarkson with the man advantage, and it's Sean Weller again, getting a wide-open look and going 10 o'clock on Richards as CU goes up 2-0. Yale D breaking down again, this time leading to a breakaway, but Richards doing his best brick wall impression and turning him away. Elaine said they didn't, they didn't make Clarkson work hard enough for their goals, and right here it shows as a wide open Brody Rotherglen scores the sixth of the year and makes it 3 0 Golden Knights. Eli's definitely looked better tonight than they did against SLU, as it's Bob Burns with a sweet move, but no finish to match. Then, a defensive turnover for Yale, and Jeremiah Crow able to catch Richards off guard as CU ends the second period with the commanding 4 0 lead. Yale looking legit in the third period, but Clarkson's David Leggio, Prince of the Pipes, not letting, letting anything by. Until finally, seven minutes into the third period, and my sophomore Mike Karwaski, you're not going to get a better look than he gets right here, as he beats Leggio and makes it 4-1. to one. But in the end, Leggio, the ECAC's top goalie, just too much, as Yale outshoots Clarkson in this one, but loses it 5-1. to one. So another tough loss for Yale as they're once again held to just one late goal and bring their weekend power play total to an embarrassing 0 for 15. Leggio, who leads the conference with a minuscule 2.17 goals allowed average, makes 24 saves as Yale outshoots Clarkson 25-23 and dominates the first and third periods, but comes away with a winless weekend. So obviously, you know, a rough weekend for the men's ice hockey team. Came out 0-2 against some uh, against these teams in New York. Steven, I mean, what went wrong this weekend? I mean, simply put it, St. Lawrence is the best team in the ECAC, and Yale does not want to meet them in the playoffs, and especially when you have to play on them on the road. That, that's just a very tough matchup there. And, you know, I take away from these games, um, after watching them, after seeing some of the, the clips myself, power play unit just not functioning. I mean, we, you look back a couple weeks ago against the Princeton, in the Princeton game, we had so many scoring opportunities, and, you know, we got to take advantage. When we have an extra man on the ice, we got to create scoring opportunities. We got to put the, put the puck in the net. That's exactly right, Neo. And that, th the power plays have not been right to me since the Harvard game when they did capitalize on those several times. But since then, Harvard, one of the weaker teams in the Ivy Leagues, they, Yale really has not capitalized on power plays, and that has to change. Coincidentally, Harvard and Dartmouth, the very teams that will be coming in this weekend for, um, for a couple games this week, hopefully will be two easy victories at Ingles for the men. Uh, but, you know, another thing I take away from the, this weekend, uh, if you look at the Clarkson game, obviously the number 10 team in the country, 
but Alec Richards, our starting goalie all year, really struggled in that game. He, uh, Coach Elaine took him out in favor of Matt Modelski, who's actually been playing a lot in the last three or four games. And, you know, if you, if you go to the games this weekend, check out, look between the pipes. We may have a new starting goalie out there. Should be interesting, Neil. So not too many good plays for the men's ho ice hockey team this weekend, but plenty of good plays elsewhere, and that brings us right to our top plays. Number five, Eric Plato. This kid thinks he's in the NBA. Just one dribble, swish. The kid had 26 points against Columbia and an awesome weekend with Ivy League Player of the Week. Number four, Neil. Paul Paul, they call him. The freshman center. He just dunks it home here as he takes it off the rim. Doesn't even require much effort for him. Number three, if you weren't not a gymnastic game before, you should be now. Look at the sophomore, Alini Lau, stunning on the floor, double flip, lands it perfectly. She was first overall in the competition in which Yale dominated SCSU. Number two, Erica Davis against Cornell. What a game. She comes up one block short of the triple double as she she doesn't allow anyone to score against her. She blocks, she scores, she rebounds. What a great game by Erica Davis. And number one, because you have written a better script, a better way to go out in your final game of your, of your career at home. Sheila Zingler, not one goal, not two goals, three goals in the third period for the hat trick. Zingler, an awesome weekend as Yale won two this weekend. Well, that brings us to the end of our show today. But of course, before we go, our YSPM Player of the Week, you just, you just saw some great women's hockey clips. But not Sheila Zingler, although she had a great weekend. But we are looking at the captain of the women's hockey team, Kristen Savard, as our player of the week this week. She had five assists in that game versus Union and two others the, the day before it against RPI. And she has had, been a great captain all year. And she had seven points total over the weekend, like I said. And not only that, but she's a great captain and a great person off the ice. She'll be receiving a trophy for being a finalist in the Hockey Humanitarian Award this weekend at the game against Dar men's hockey game against Dartmouth on Sunday, which will be broadcasted on ESPNU. That brings, to, that brings us to the reason why our reason why Harvard sucks this week, because while we may be able to watch some stuff on ESPN, people at Harvard cannot. Because you guys might think the limited cable sucks, but Harvard gets no cable. Yeah, maybe that's why they think they're smarter than us, because they can't watch TV. All they do is read all day. They just suck. I think actually they've been watching a little too many soap operas, Neil, to be honest. But uh, that wraps up our show this week. Uh, look forward to a great week in sports again. We'll see you next week. For Neil Horwitz, I'm Stephen Horn. See you next week. What else could we choose? We're going to be more than local boys. And shake, shake, shake. Across the forest and floor